Welcome to Trains 21. In addition to this YouTube channel, you can also find us online at trains21.org and trains21.com. In part one, we left off with the tail end of the newly minted Train 12Z, which we now know has since been rebranded yet again, this time as Train 14Z. This means that this same basic train has seen no less than four name changes in the past several years, going from the 12R to the 14R to the 12Z to the 14Z, its southbound sister train 11R being rebranded as the 11Z back in 2016. Having been treated to a rare, these days, pair of meets, and technically a trio if you count the meet between the 11 and 12 Zs down in Taylor, October 23rd was an unexpected day for the history books. And with the Binghamton, New York bound 12 Z, now well north of the steam town wide, the Delaware Lackawanna's DL3 can now finally move out onto the main and make its reverse move down to Taylor Yard. And as the train rolls past, you'll be treated to some interesting radio chatter between the NS dispatcher in Atlanta and the DL3 engineer. Yeah, 
Despite all of the losses in 2020, one big win for local rail fans was the September 24 official opening of the DL's new Von Storch engine facility in Green Ridge. A ribbon-cutting ceremony officially opened the new $2.6 million facility. The 200-foot-long building includes two diesel servicing tracks, a 20-ton overhead crane, and an 80-foot-long inspection pit, offering three times the capacity of the former DL shops in Scranton. Since the DL took over rail operations in 1996, traffic has surged 500% outgrowing the 1988 South Scranton shop building. That facility will now be utilized for the housing and repair of maintenance of way equipment. The new shop is sited near the footprint of the former Delaware Hudson Green Ridge Roundhouse built in the 1880s. The new Von Storch shop will also perform major overhauls to the 17 locomotives used on Genesee Valley Transportation's other railroads in New York State.
Another bright spot in 2020 was that frac sand was still on the move. I've since been told that sand movements to Carbondale have drastically slowed down over the past year, but since I haven't been out chasing trains in that time period, I can't say for sure if that's true or not. One loss for the DL came on November 12 with the derailment that happened in the Steamtown Yard. And by the time I arrived on the scene, the wreck crane just about had the disabled Alco back on the rails. Once the derailment was cleaned up, the day's DL3, now moving engines first, was making its way south into Taylor. One of the few times that I've been able to catch all four big six-axle Alcos on one train, the short manifest of mostly empty covered hoppers glided down grade where it will drop its empties most likely pick up a string of lows and probably make the round trip between Scranton and Mount Pocono yet again. That's how I wrapped up my rail fanning year of 2020. As I'm recording part two right now, I've only shot one train in almost a year, and it was a chance meeting of the Reading and Northern's Taylor Yard job train symbol YJPI hustling south just a few miles from its Piston Yard home base behind a pair of vintage pups and its eye-catching red shoving platform.
So what local area train will I catch next and when? Only time can tell, so we'll just have to wait and see. Until that day comes, for Trains 21, call me AC.